Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been pondering how to turn my Lynx spacecraft into an effective Mars lander as it was originally meant to be. I had made a lander stage for it before, looking like this, and of course it would need lander legs and an engine, specifically the ED7 engine right here, but it was a little bit underpowered in desperation. I had two slots, but it's still a little bit awkward. And for re-entry into Mars' atmosphere, it doesn't look quite right. And so I have created something new. Uh, first of all, we have a service module that wraps around like that, little spaces for the RCS ports, but the original spacecraft did not have a downward-facing RCS port, so we have the extra RCS ports here. The old lander stage had its own quads, but we don't necessarily need that. Uh, I've made a special variant of the ED-10X, which is more powerful and a gas generator engine instead of a pressure-fed engine. And then the part that I am highlighting for this episode because it will be part, well this part will also be a part of the nifty parts pack, but the nifty part that I am highlighting is this heat shield. And this heat shield, uh, first of all you'll note, is not an ablative heat shield, it's a bunch of metallic tiles a la Venture Star. And also, and that allows it to be reused, of course. Mars isn't actually that hot. You're coming in usually at lower speeds than uh, low Earth orbit entry speeds. And also, it is a very thin atmosphere. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you really don't need that strong heat shield unless you're coming straight down. Which is why our landers and rovers and all have so far had a blade of heat shields because they were... Uh, coming straight down in order to get a very accurate landing spot. So they were taking in more heat than this would need to in order to first capture into orbit. And well, really, I don't intend for this to actually do the capture into orbit part at all, because in the To Mars and Beyond series, we're going to have it uh, being brought there by a transfer craft. So all it needs to do is get from low Mars orbit down to the surface. And low Mars orbit is less than 4,000 meters per second. So. Yeah, we don't need all the ablative heat shieldness for that. We do need to get some seats in a side hatch. There we go, that's the one. Uh, this is the pass-through variant of the Lynx, so that's why we have that. But anyway, what's special about this heat shield except for the metallic hexagon tiles? It is that it turns into the landing legs. Also, hopefully air brakes, because as it splays out, uh, it will hopefully gets more drag. I haven't got an air brake module. It's not configured like the air, the stock air brakes. But the goal is that it will act like air brakes by having colliders that stick out like this. And then of course these little skis that act as landing legs. Is it ideal? I don't know. Uh, it's just an idea I came up with and I thought it was nifty. Right? Hence nifty parts. Uh, so it does have a deploy limit thing. So let's just take a look. You can see the Landing legs sort of go up like that, fit into the wall, and then the mechanism draws it in like that. There are upsides and downsides. Upside, of course, it lets you have the center-mounted engine. And since I'm adding the service module in the pack, you can just have your pod. Uh, other pods won't uh, quite fit exactly the service module quite right. Uh, but still, you'll have the engine gap, and there's no collider in the center here. Yeah, so you can use the engine, but, but, if you want to use the engine to ascend, you have to keep these things out, and if you keep them out, they're getting more drag. They do have colliders on them, so that's extra drag that you have to put up with, so that's not great. And I only realized that late into the development of this, so uh, I should have thought of that earlier. Yep, so that's the downside, but otherwise it's sort of, well, like I said, nifty. So we are going to try it out in its intended purpose. I've got parachutes here. I, I didn't put the seats in yet, but those are a minor mass consideration. We'll see whether everything else works. We'll have it all deployed first because we have to deorbit. And the ED-10X engine has, well, let's see, what have we got here? We're really tight on Delta V. Why, why do I always make my Mars landers tight on Delta V? I don't know. But we've got about two times, well, a little bit less than two times Mars gravity with a thrust-to-weight ratio there. 
so that's okay. And we just gotta cheat it into orbit around Mars and see how it goes. I didn't put any MLI layers. Let's get it into daylight though. I also did not put any solar panels, so that's not built into the service module. Neither are the ladders or the ladder. You probably would want to though. Um, well, it depends on your vehicle, but uh, one to go down here and one to get across the heat shield bit there. I'll arm the parachutes. I won't do that via regular staging. Okay, the orbiting. We are in a tight low orbit here. No, oh, that should more than do the trick. 30 kilometers. Okay, well, retract. Closes up like that. Note that I made sure that the center portion is all solid. It's not like it has a gap right in the middle. That's generally frowned upon, I think. So right now, surface velocity coming down from orbit is just 3,250 meters per second. Which is why I don't think we need a full ablative heat shield. I've made the heat shield fairly heavy. And I don't know if it's necessary for it to be that heavy. As far as the dry mass of this is concerned, it's about 8 tons. And then its fuel mass is 26.7. I did add tweak scale to both of these, the heat shield as well as the service module, so that it can fit a variety of different capsules. So even if you're not using the links, you should be, as long as you have tweak scale, you can scale it to whatever you need to. The diameter right now is 6 meters across. Unfortunately, it looks like the ground level is pretty high up. It's like 30 kilometers above the, the reference point. So that's a bit rough. Just out of curiosity, I wonder if the deceleration rate would be higher when we deploy the heat shield. Let me come out of time warp for a sec. Maybe we can get the drag information on the custom windows somewhere. Atmospheric drag. Well, let's just see what it thinks. I, I don't know if it's going to be anything at all. It's buffing the RCS a bit. Oh, it really deployed immediately. Oh, it did increase. Hold on, let me retract. Yeah, it did go down. Okay, so deploying it does increase our atmospheric drag. Let's see, deploy. But why does it go immediately? Um, so we, I, I was playing around with the deploy limit, and let's see, actually. Uh oh, uh, that might not be good. Okay, okay, uh, just deploy it. 1.23, and then retract. And then it goes down to 1 there. But then when I deploy, it seems to deploy immediately. I need to stop it from doing that. Oh, I don't know if it likes this. It could change the center of lift to be below the center of mass, so that this will have issues, I'm not sure. Eventually we'll have the parachutes, so there's that. We're not getting much heat effect, and I don't think we're getting that much heating at all anyway. I should have a read on that. But yep, yeah, I'll take the extra atmospheric drag. It seems to be leaning one way though. I did not intend for it to be imbalanced like this. I don't know anything that ought to be imbalancing it. They are in perfect symmetry in theory, except this little bit here. This little bit is not in symmetry. The part that covers the engine. So that's a bit of a rub. So is that little bit actually causing it to lean one way? Hmm. Well, how are we going to get enough drag? It's really high up here. Ballast Mariner's this is not. 
like 33 kilometers above the reference point. I don't know if the parachute's gonna deploy properly. Uh, I'm gonna pour on some thrust to help, hopefully. Oh, they ripped apart. The uh, well, okay, how about. Can we, like, abort? To no, we probably can't. <laughs> And of course those rip. Okay, so we're gonna need better parachutes or even more drag. This isn't giving us enough drag to make this landing at all. Hmm. But maybe if we were landing in a better location it would help. Well, I guess we're gonna see what happens. Eek. Yeah, 2,000 meters per second, well, nothing too surprising there. Alright, but the part is the part. I mean, if you want to use it, I'll put it in the nifty parts pack and link that. And if you don't have the links, that's part of my crew vessels pack, I'll link that too. I mean, in principle, the part works. I mean, you can see it's sitting on the legs of the heat shield. Uh, I don't know if the Lynx is going to be my Mars lander for the To Mars and Beyond series. I think probably I'll do better uh, making a modified a mini Q. I think that might work out better for us. This is just too hard to slow this down. It doesn't have enough surface area. And these are definitely not acting like air brakes. I could try and put the air brake module on the heat shield, but I'm afraid that would complicate things. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody mentioned that there is a heat shield air brake uh, mod out there, some some mod that has a part like that. But yeah, I'll have to think about that. For now, this clearly didn't work out quite right, and I do have the Mini Q as an option as a different lander for the Tomorrow's and Beyond series, so I'll think about it. But maybe this is something nifty that people will want to try out or use in their designs. And so I'll link it in the video description. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.